angels in this house and I speak unto God to go forth in spite of I've been down that road I've been here before and I still feel like he, Isaiah and I just need to be me I still feel like Isaiah Lord if there is nobody you can send me and I'll go today I want to talk to you from a hurtful passage the reason why I say it's hurtful is because of the fact that you listen to what I have to say and don't try to pre-elect what you think I'm saying or don't try to rationalize it but really hear with your heart you come to find out that what I'm about to speak is the unadulterated truth John chapter 3 and 16 verse is so familiar to a lot of people but yet it's a failure in a lot of people's lives a lot of people don't know but yet they know that verse John 3 and 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life and although that scripture is known by many people you learned that scripture in vacation Bible school you learned that scripture in Bible band you learned that scripture in Sunday school you learned it because you heard it being preached and taught so much in the church until you become familiar with that scripture but you have not yet come familiar with the truth of what God love is all about. Do you really understand why he so loved the world? Do you really know? If you really knew why he loved the world so much, then we would love him back just as he loves us. If you really knew how much he loved the world, then you would understand that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. Don't get it twisted. There is no other name. You can call him whatever you want to call him. But his name is Jesus. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can believe in Buddha. You can believe in Mohammed. You can believe in Confucius. You can believe in the universe. You believe whatever you want to believe. But in the name of Jesus, every knee bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Not only did he give his only begotten son by the name of Jesus, but he sent his son to die for our sins. And before you start to hate him, I just really wish you get a chance to know him. Just get a chance to know him. The world wouldn't be in the condition it's in if we would get to know Jesus. The world wouldn't be in the shape that it's in if folks would take out time to stop listening to just random prophets and preachers and start listening to what the Spirit of God is speaking to them from his Bible, from this Bible, their Bible. Getting a personal relationship with him. Because the time is here. And I tell you it is here and it has always been here. We just have been so sleep and so blind that we don't think that this world is about to become more chaotic. Without Jesus, the world is going to be in an uproar. Without Jesus. Without Jesus. There will be continuance of murders with no conviction. There will be continuance of suicides with no conviction. Man can go to the casino and gamble his money, lose his whole paycheck, take his house title deed that he's not even finished paying on and mortgage that and lose it. Bet that and he loses it. Put the car up, loses it. 
all at the expense of trying to get rich. He loses everything and then he go on top of the bridge. If he don't know Jesus, he's subject to commit suicide. If he don't know the Lord, if he don't have that relationship with him, the devil would tell him, life is not worth living. You might as well drive yourself off a cliff. I've come to realize that not knowing Jesus puts you in a world of trouble because without him, you have no life. There is a difference between living and having life. John 1 and 4 said, In him was the life, and the life is the light of men. So if you don't have him, you don't have life, and therefore you don't have the light. So any person who don't have him, that's Jesus, you're walking in darkness. That's why you can continue in sin, and you find no wrong. That's why you can continue smoking, doking, drinking. And you find that not wrong. That's why you can continue to live with a man or a woman. And refuse to be married to him. And you don't find that wrong. That's why you can continue to live homosexuality, lifestyle, and lesbianism. And think that that's a way of life. Which that is a choice that you choose. But you think that's the way of life. And people with real morals supposed to accept that sin and abomination like it's right apart from Jesus you won't know what's right he become the light of the world then he makes you the light of the world people hate Jesus because he don't go and do what they want him to do so they hate him when they first come to him Confess with their mouth, believe in their heart. They're excited. But as you journey down this road of being this born again believer, trusting and leaning and depending on Him, you come to realize that this is not just a cakewalk. You have to gird up the loins, you have to gird up your waist with truth, you have to put on the whole arm because. This is not something you just join up today and then everything that was going wrong in your life is going to stop and everything going to turn around and work for your good. No, you're going to have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You got to work it. Being saved comes with a cost. It costs to be saved. It costs to be sanctified. It costs you something to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to be anointed. By the Spirit of God. You will lose friends just because you know Jesus. You'll lose church members just because you know Jesus. Because the Jesus they know is the Jesus they say it's all right to be unequally yoked. God gonna raise them up. God will raise her up. The Jesus that they know tells them that it's okay to go to the boat and gamble. God gonna make a way for you. That $400 you just wanted to vote, God did that. It's okay for them to say to, to for their Jesus to say to them, the way that you live in, don't, uh, don't worry about it because God knows your heart. Well, he's telling us now. He knows the heart, but every heart know his own. Every heart know his own wrong. Every heart know his own bitterness. Every heart knows his own sin. The Bible is so against human morals until we cannot try and fit what the Word of God is trying to say and make it fit us. We got to fit the Word of God and let it become our armor. Let the Holy Ghost and the Word of God become our breastplate of righteousness. This kind of preaching hurts people feeling because nobody likes to be told that you really don't know him. You hate him. When you hate somebody that you can see and you claim to love God whom you cannot see and whom you have never seen, 
you are a liar. You don't know the Lord. When you get mad at the overseer because he's ministering the truth and you take attitude and leave and you are on the ministerial staff and you come up with your own reason why you left. I don't like the way he handling things. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like this and don't like that. You don't know Jesus. Because if you're looking for a church that doesn't have any kind of structure or order in the house, that's not a church of Jesus Christ. That's not the church of the Lord. That's a church that's going straight to hell. When you look for a church home, you're trying to find a place to build. You're trying to find a place to operate in your gift and in your calling. You have to choose wisely. And the first way to choose is to ask the Lord, where should I be? I need to be in a place where prophecy is accurate. I need to be in a, a house where the fire of God is actually consuming and delivering. Be in an atmosphere where the anointing of God don't come at a time limit and a time frame. Ah, we got about 30 more seconds to give them praise. The devil is a liar. I'm so sick of church and tradition to where it's sickening. It wears you out. Burns you up. Do anybody really want God for real? Anybody really want the Lord for real? Not so you can just appear to the world that you saved. But that when things start to arise in your life, you won't walk away from the first sign of calamity. The Bible says when you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Your strength is not as strong as you say it is. When adversity comes and you can't stand, you're going to waste away. That song say, if your soul ain't anchored in Jesus, you're going to drift away. God so loved the world. What did he do? He decided that he would give. He looked on this earth. And no matter how many prophets, no matter how many seers, no matter how many people that was here on this earth, male or female, boy or girl, babe or adolescent, teenager or preteen, aged men or well-renowned men, no matter how much favor Job had with God, favor that Noah had with God, David had with God. No matter how much David was a man after God's own heart, Samuel being a person who had the ears to hear God. De Deborah being a strong, mighty woman of valor, willing to go to war on the behalf of her God. No matter how much Jehoshaphat called for in the symbol, Ezekiel and all of them, and Micah and Malachi and Josiah them. no matter how many of Joshua's and Moses and Aaron and Miriam's and, 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 and Methusiah's that he raised up none of them was good enough to do what Jesus was going to be here on this earth what he was sent here to do so God said I looked on the earth and couldn't find nobody that was worthy I looked under the earth I couldn't even go find one of Satan imps and, and, and deliver them from their spirit and, 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 and cleanse them because I'm God. I'm all powerful. I can take a devil and clean them up and make them out of a saint. If you don't believe that, then you never got saved from the start because before we became in Christ, we was in the devil. Before we came saved and sanctified, we was more of the devil. That's why Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. Because we did wicked things. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body? This body of affliction. But before, before we even came to the Lord, we served the, the devil. We did devilish things. 
We've had pleasure with sin, and sin had pleasure in it. We didn't think smoking was wrong. We didn't think that was going to do no harm to the body. We didn't think drinking was wrong. We didn't think that was going to do any harm to the body. We didn't know that drinking and smoking causes accessorious living in your life. It makes you lay down with sinful folks, get up with folks that you really don't know, not knowing if you have an in, uh, incurable disease and, and, and not knowing if you got up and have some type of STD. You don't know because why? The devil didn't tell you. But Satan seeking to kill, steal, and to destroy. Looking to destroy you. Ready to destroy you. Got his mind made up that he going to destroy you. The minute you come to the Lord, Satan really is coming after you 100%. He wants to discourage you. Make you feel like, don't go over there. It's not going to go well for you. Don't give Jesus your heart. He ain't a real person. He's just a myth. Well, just keep on living. In the end, we're going to find out who wins. The saddest thing about the end is that the dreadful day of the Lord is coming. But the saddest thing about the end is, is that when he get here and you see him for who he is, there is no room to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I believe you now. He says some men won't even taste death until they see the Son of Man coming. A great cloud on a great cloud with power. The storm is out. Without Jesus, we're going to continue to have hurricanes. We're going to continue to have diverse places where there are multiplicities of murders. People getting killed. Folks losing their life. Young people dying. Dying before they even ever get a chance to really get to know Jesus. I'm not talking about get to know the church that they mama take them to or they grandmama take them to. And then when they get about 10 to 12 years old, they make up their mind that I don't want to go to church no more. So you don't let them go to church and you, you try to put it up on social media and tell them, come on, sit down and watch this with me. That ain't the same as being in the house of God, hearing the word, being among the saints so that you can draw strength from one another. Wherever there's unity, there's strength. Wherever there's no unity, there's dysfunctional. Dysfunctionality. The devil is trying to drive many of us preachers insane. Want us to give it up. Want us to quit. But we know Jesus. No matter what you do, you better hold on to Jesus. No matter how far you go off, you better learn to look up and say, Lord, forgive me. I have sinned. Keep a repentance. You got some folks out there who God tell them that it's right to rob somebody. I don't want that God. You got other denominations and religions out there who say that they God tell you it's right to cut your brother's head off. I for an eye, two for a two. I don't want that God. I want that God that's going to assure me that I'm going to have some rough roads and some crooked roads but he will make them smooth if I continue to trust him. I, I want that God to tell me that every day when I wake up it's not a bed of ease and it's not a flower bed of roses that I'm going to have tribulation in this world. Why? Because if he tell me that when I start going through it I know he telling me the truth. The problem is we got a God that people are trying to give to us and administer to us saying everything's going to be alright but it seems like we have all kind of hell on every side. No, I want that God that's banished. That God that'll tell me that we've been made into a suffering for a night. It's okay to cry, servant. It's okay to get your feelings hurt. It's okay for everybody to walk out and leave you. It's okay because, Lord, I'm with you always to the end of the earth. And then he'll put his spirit upon you so you can feel his presence. I need that God to let me know that you can still trust me even if you don't have lights. If you don't have water. If you don't have these things, I, you can still trust me. I'll make a way for you. I want the God that prophesies the truth and tells me things that's to come to pass and things that have come to pass and things that is going to come to pass from the past, present, to the future. That's the kind of God I want. I don't need that God to make me believe that it's all about money. Because when money no longer has its power, you're going to need Jesus. 
When money runs out, you're going to need Jesus. When there's a shortage of food, you're going to need Jesus. See, he told you already that when he leave, then you're going to have to fast. He had already spoke to you and said, when he get out of here, then you're going to have a need to fast and to pray. Now, watch this. Fasting will help you when you know him. Because he fasts with you. You die to the flesh. So it's okay to train yourself to miss a couple of meals. Go, go some time or a couple of hours or so. Or go two, three days without anything to drink or eat. And give yourself over just in case when you run across a situation on your hand, you're not panicking like everybody else. A lot of folks look at saying that I know Jesus because we got this big beautiful church. That don't prove you know Jesus. You can have a good paying job. It can have a great follower of people following under you. They got good paying jobs. They're doing more furnishing the church than the pastor. But the pastor that knows Jesus, that storefront pastor, that pastor that ain't trying to be the big pastor, ain't trying to have all of the social media followers, the pastor that just want to preach the truth, you refuse to follow him. Well, Jesus did say a prophet is without honor, but in his own home. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believed in him should not perish, have everlasting life. This world got the end. This world got to come to an end. The world you live in psychologically is going to come to an end. One day your mind goes shut down. You keep getting older and older. One day your health going to fail. One day your body's not going to produce the insulin like it's supposed to. One day you're going to get a bad report. They're going to tell you, I'm sorry, but you're not a spring chicken no more. Your bones can't hold up like they used to. You're going to have to know Jesus. Because if you don't know him, it's a sad day coming. In Revelation, he say, the way you die is the way you get up. Don't die being a fornicator. Because when you rise from the dead, or I should say when you were raised from the dead, to be judged, you get judged as a fornicator. If you filthy, low down, dirty, and no good, and never did any good, you're going to get judged as a filthy, low down, dirty, no good, ain't never did any good type of individual. If I die, I need to die as a truth speaking preacher, not a lying man of God. Because I get up, if I die a truth preaching preacher, I get up a truth preaching preacher. And if I die a lying man of God, I get up as a dying lying man of God. Don't die a whoremonger. Always living in fornication and adultery, but never getting married. Many people say, well, I don't have to get married according to the law. It's common law marriage. I've been with my old lady for about 10, 15, 20 years, and it's just like we married. We don't need no paper. The devil is a liar. The Bible says you have to obey the laws of the land. See, this is the type of God I love that don't miss nothing. So for every excuse, he got an answer. For every excuse, he got something to say. And he's still saying it. It's better to be obedient than to try to make sacrifice and think I'm going to accept sacrifice. He want obedience above or to esteem the sacrifice. I'm tired. God said, no, you're not. I'm tired, Lord. You're not tired. Because when you lay down and get up, you're going to go to work in the morning. But when you lay down, you stay asleep. You're too tired to roll over. You're too tired to give me my praise. Too tired to give me my glory. I'm now showing you where your heart is at. I'm showing you now where your heart is at. Where, where, where your treasure is stored and laid up now. What are you going to do? When the Lord goes silent, 
God not only looked up under the earth, but he looked up in heaven. Couldn't even find an angel that was worthy. Oh, Gabriel was good, but Gabriel wasn't good enough. Michael was good, but Michael wasn't good enough. Gabriel stood right in the presence of God, spoke as the mouth of God, but he wasn't good enough to take the place of Jesus, the Son of God. Get to know Jesus. I admonish you to get to know him. Get to know him for who he is. He wants to fellowship and commune with you. He want to bless you. He want to bring you to a place in your life where you will know that he is speaking to you. He want to show you some good things. He want to show you some great things. Get to know him. You don't have a church home. Get to know him. He'll lead you to the right place. Quit being so hooked up on what it looked like. And just thank God that you're in a house that's safe. That's surrounded with his presence. Endowed by his anointing and his glory and his power. People are running to places that they think God is in. There's no healing power. There's no deliverance. Everything that's there, it just don't seem to be working. It's time to get to know Jesus. He's coming back. Will you be ready? He can call your name at any day, any given time. Will you be ready? Don't hate him because of what other folks have done, how they live their life. Don't hate him because of how other people have portrayed him. Get to know him for yourself. And just understand that as a human, everybody makes mistakes. Not, do, not just make mistakes, but everybody come up short. But if you're too busy looking at people's shortcomings, you have already fallen yourself. If you're too busy judging everybody's shortcoming and judging their downfall, you have already been judged yourself. If you're too busy trying to condemn everybody, you already condemned yourself. Because why? You say you know Jesus, then you're part of the one body. You can't function without the rest of the body parts. One body, many members. God is calling. He's calling you to get back in your right place. One day you won't have people like myself who will continue to cry out to you and say, come back, get back in your place. Go back to where you belong. Shake back, fight back, hold on. But when the enemy trying to pull you out, hold back. Stand still. Equip yourself like men and women of God. Get prepared for the warfare that's coming. One day we won't be here to say these things. You just have to operate on what you know. If you know little, you'll lose much. But if you know much, You'll win much more. He didn't know little, don't know enough. Satan will play with you because of that. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You reject knowledge when it's available? He said, I will also reject you. Get to know him. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you. I want to invite you to come out and fellowship with us. Let's get ready to prepare ourselves for nothing but authentic truth. Some of you all right now that's going to be watching, you tied into some sin. It got its hands on you. 
he got his arms in a tight grip around you. And it don't have no plans on letting you go. That sin is called the sin of excuses. You got every excuse why you can't get to church. You have every excuse why you're not going back to church. You blame it on your children. You say, no, they, they, they just too bad. I, ain't, I don't want to embarrass myself or uh, my children embarrass me. Uh, stop with the excuses. Because you're training them to grow up apart from Jesus. Because if you be truthful, you're not opening your Bible in your home. You're not teaching them about the Lord right there in your home. They're listening to all of this other stuff. And children absorb things like a sponge. So if you don't train them up early, you can't blame them if they get killed at the age of 12, die at the age of 13, murder at the age of 14 through 17. You can't blame them if they don't make it to 25 to 30 years old and more. Because you didn't do your part. So let go of that sinful excuse. And get up and get back. And come back and go back. Shake back. Bounce back. Do whatever you need to do to get to know Jesus for real. The day you hear his voice, stop hardening your heart. Stop closing down your heart. You know he's calling you. You know he's pulling on you. You know he's coming after you. You see everything is starting to open up and then it falls. And you wonder, why do it start off good and then here it fall again? I, I start out getting up and feel like I'm ahead and then I'm back 10 more steps again. I thought I had this conquer and now I got to fight with this. I thought I had that master, now I got to start over again. Why I keep on constantly restarting and restarting? It's because you really don't know him. When you get to know him, he'll begin to start telling you about all of these things and it comes because when you look back at it for real you know that you walked away from the call you know you done stop praising them like you should you stop singing to them now you just wait till you get into the building and sing you don't even have a song in your heart no more you got to wait till somebody else start a song. You allowed yourself to fall short. Meaning you, he have delivered you from prison. You just flat out lied. Oh, I'm coming back. I, I'm going to serve God. And God knows. And, and, and I ain't going back. And drugs that became your best friend now. Alcohol that became your reason why. And you lying and saying, no. I, 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 it's because of the man of God. It's because of those hypocrites. Those fake folks. The devil is a liar. Every man has to bear his own cross. And bear his own burden. No person has power over you to make you walk away from God. That's a choice. But when you don't know Jesus, it's easy just to walk away. I admonish you. Come, get to know him before it's too late. We all live, but we all have to die. The truth of the matter is, I'd rather live and live unto him so I don't die. I sleep. I take my rest. And when he tell me to get up, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You may enter into the rest. I want to hear that. I know you do too. So therefore, I admonish you. I beseech you to get into a hurry and make haste to come back to the Lord. Father in heaven, we pray right now for that individual out there. It could be just one, or it could be a whole household, or it could be thousands. But however the multitude or however the one may be, no matter where they are and where they at, Father, I pray right now that you will begin to minister to them.